Hi everybody, if you are watching this video, it's because I am in the process of working with the opposite group on their story development forms and collecting their edit assignment. And so you are supposed to be watching this video and learning a little bit about Zooming and Zoom recording and setting up these uh, for both interviews and also for potential look lives and other things you're gonna do this semester. Or maybe you have to shoot a stand up for yourself and you have to use your computer instead of one of our JVC cameras. So this is just a really quick thing that I wanna go over with you uh, during class time. And you'll probably actually have time during class time to do the assignment that's attached to this lecture, uh, but you have a whole week to get it done. It's not due until Monday the 28th of September. So um, I have put together this handy dandy handout about some of the things you want to be thinking about if you are going to do a Zoom interview or you're going to use Zoom to record a look, to, a look live for yourself. So um, one of the things you'll have to do, obviously, is you're going to have to download um, Zoom to your computers if you haven't done that already. Um, it is free, and you can record up to 40 minutes of material at any given time uh, without having to pay for it. So it's a really handy tool for journalists, especially during the COVID crisis. Um, also, I would strongly encourage you for the assignment that we're going to be working on to show me your best professional look. I only need to see you from about the waist up, and so we need to see like what is your professional look going to be on camera when you're trying to both interview somebody and then also when you're doing a live stand-up or a look live or something like that. So your shot is going to be very similar to what we would do if you were shooting a head and shoulders interview, although these tend to be, for the most part, unless you're like working at the network level, for the most part these shots are done as head and shoulders but directly into the camera instead of um, a rule of thirds looking in this direction. So sometimes you'll see a network uh, shot where they're kind of faking you out, making it look like the person is looking at you. But most of the time we just do them straight on and we need to be thinking about that. So all the other rules apply. Lighting, background, all the things that we practiced in the shooting assignment number three and the things that you've been working on since then. So I want to kind of point out to you for just a moment that the background that I have here that I'm showing is not good for a Zoom interview. I have a really boring wall, and right now I'm kind of shooting up my nose a little bit. I'm, I'm not quite at eye level. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you on a little walk around my office. Stand by. interesting to look at. I've got the camera up to eye level. Now my glasses are showing some reflection, so it might be helpful if I try to look up just a little bit while I'm doing this, but uh, the other alternative would be to ask uh, your subject or perhaps even you to take glasses off while you're doing this particular project, right? So you're going to try to get the uh, computer lens up to eye level so that when you're looking into the computer, it looks like you're having a conversation with somebody instead of looking up their nose and looking up ahead of them. And we see a lot of that. Um, you can also ask your interview subject at any given time whether they would be willing to um, change the shot behind you uh, or behind them um, so that you can get a good look of them. You have a little bit less control over that, uh, but you do have control over the way you look and what your background looks like. So what I want you to do is I want you to contemplate these things while you're learning to set up your own Zoom look live. And for this assignment, what you're going to do is you're going to follow all of the instructions of things to think about that are on the handout. And then all I want you to do is I want you to look into the camera, like look directly into Zoom and give me 20 or 30 seconds of some kind of news report summary. I don't care what you say, be creative, so that I can see what you look like um, when you're doing a Zoom recording uh, in a professional space. 
This is also really helpful because I know a lot of you don't like to show your face during class, but if you can curate your background and you can show up visually for class, you're going to make an impression on your professors and you're also going to make an impression on uh, your employers. And it also gets you used to kind of doing this so that when you go to the interview world, you're not feeling so out of sorts or unprepared because actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually move back just a little bit. I think this might look better um, because actually it's really important that you get comfortable with looking into a camera, talking into a camera and having a professional look um, for people to, to converse with you. And so um, it's an important uh, professional skill set. So I want to kind of see what your setting looks like. I want to see what your background looks like. I know many of you are working from home or you're in your apartments. You know, you could do this at the library. You can find another place. You could set it up outside and do it outside if you're worried about the background. That's okay too. Um, you still have to get your computer up onto a book and you still need to think about, you know, what you want to be talking about. But this is a fine way to shoot stand-ups for yourself when you don't have access to JVC gear or um, you don't want to come into campus or you're trying to conduct an interview with somebody who is afraid to come to you um, face to face for an interview. And these are things that we're doing in, in the modern times. I also want to point out a couple of things, um, and I'll show you a couple of video examples, but uh, because at the, the second page of my handout says, but wait, there's more. And that is because there is more. Just because you are going to shoot yourself in an interview setting doesn't mean that the Zoom recording is going to be everything you need uh, to, to gather. The recording itself is central. Obviously, we want to see what you have to say or we want to hear what your interview subject has to say if you're interviewing them via Zoom. But it's also really important to get a couple of additional shots of your Zoom interview so that we can um, kind of do what we would do if we were working out in the field. We need a couple of cutaways. And so as the handout points out, um, one thing that you can do is you can set a phone, your phone, uh, after the interview is over. You don't have to do this during the interview. Um, set your phone up somewhat catty corner, I'll show you in just a moment, to your interview. And then you can hit record facing you and record yourself looking into the camera asking a qu or looking into the computer asking a question. Well, that's right, John. How do you feel about that? And then maybe 15 or 20 seconds of you just listening. Of course, you're not going to actually be listening. You're just going to be making like you're listening. Now, don't do a big head bob or anything like that. Just enough to where, you know, it, it's clear that you're listening to that person. Just shoot 20 seconds of that from um, the direction of if I had a photographer shooting a shot of me, what would that photographer get? And that person could capture both my computer, as you'll see in the handout, you can get your computer and yourself. Now, I don't like the side on shot quite as much, but uh, you can get the idea. You can also shoot a shot, as you'll see here, of the computer with the video from your Zoom recording rolling in it. And then you can also do this with FaceTime with your phone as well. So take a look at those things. Let me, uh, I'm going to minimize the screen. I'm going to share my screen with you for a moment. I'm just going to show you a couple of packages that um, reporters were creative um, in trying to integrate some of these things last uh, semester when we ended up having to uh, go home at the last minute. So I am going to, um, let's see. I'm going to need to hold on just one second. I'm going to need to open a file in my computer. I was not thinking about having to open this in advance. So let's see if I can open. Um, okay, so I'll show this one where it uses FaceTime really creatively. Um, I feel like we're in a position where on. we can help out. Just one second. I'm going to share this tab. And I'll share it. Well, actually, I think actually I can just play this straight out of here. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to show a couple of different ones. All right, stand by.
All right. Okay. Here's an example of a reporter doing a great job of shooting a moving video um, and some of the record tricks he played. I feel like we're in a position where we can help out. And if we're in that position, why not do it? Chris Singleton has been helping. In a time when a trip to the store is a struggle for some, Singleton and his wife offered to help families in need with groceries anonymously. He says so far he's brought groceries to eight families. Some people have been crying just saying you don't know what this does for me. Uh, so it's been good and it warms my heart because me and my wife were able to do so. What would you say to people who are going through tough times right now? Being someone that's gone through tough times, like not just a person that just talks about it but hasn't been through it. Being that I've you know, lost both of my parents. You know, I had to take my brother and sister in with me before I was 21 years old. I say it is, it is tough right now. There's no getting around that. It is hard. It's okay to cry. But realize this. This is not the end. I believe that there's going to be struggle right now, yes. But this won't define you forever. For years, Singleton has been defined by his words, love is stronger. Even in these uncertain times, he continues to love. In Goose Creek, I'm Will Volk. Now that's just a really creative way to shoot a story that uh, you have no access to that person face to face. Um, so I'm just trying to think, uh, have you, you know, pay attention to some of the shots that Will shot of himself listening and asking questions that helped to tell that story. Um, let's try another one. This is another creative use of both Zoom and cutaways. Pay attention to this. As coronavirus continues to take its toll on the nation, NASCAR venues that normally sound like this sound like this. Races are being postponed until at least mid-May, but that is not stopping NASCAR from bringing races to their fans. E-NASCAR, NASCAR's iRacing series, has drawn in millions of new viewers and is effectively changing the sports fan base. That's because races have moved from here to here, online, where eNASCAR and iRacing is streamed through Twitch, and some events are even televised nationally. Casey Kerwin, one of the drivers in eNASCAR's iRacing series, has noticed a sizable difference in viewers since the quarantine started. There's just tons of people online all the time compared to what it used to be, so it's just uh, blowing up. And blown up it has, as Nielsen reports that 5.4 million viewers that don't watch NASCAR have watched at least virtual race. This increase in viewership doesn't just open opportunities for drivers. Evan Pasoko is the lead broadcaster for eNASCAR's Coca-Cola iRacing series, which has its last six races televised nationally. How's it been having the opportunity to call races nationally? It's been wild. And I know that we've been working a lot with NASCAR to, to try to create more content. But, I mean, I'm thrilled. I'm never going to complain. Uh, I think that uh, I never could have imagined six, seven years ago that I could call races on TV. While coronavirus has left sports fans without much to watch, eNASCAR has raced towards the top. For Carolina Insider, I'm Zach McKinstry in Charlotte. Now, that was just a very creative package. He didn't he ever leave his house except for to shoot a couple of shots at the Charlotte Motor Speedway uh, during the during March and so that was uh, pretty crazy times um, really carefully watch some of how he did that it's very creative here's another example let me show you here is Sam asking a question that he recorded after the interview was actually complete. UFC junior Manish Chaudhry shared how he has remained sane during this lockdown. In your meantime and in your free time, what have you been doing to keep the busy time you doing? So I've been trying to catch up on my classes for next semester, just get ahead since I have the free time to do that. So again, you have this opportunity to shoot um, in a way that 
you know, integrates you to the story sometimes. We don't always use questions, but um, there, there are creative ways to do this. Um, at this level of this particular story, they're shooting a shot of the screen with the interview, and then they pop from that to the interview itself. Let's demonstrate that. Due to level four advisories by the DOS and CDC, this comes to the dismay of some students who made deposits. Students like junior Shelby Beckler, who had been looking forward to a trip to Germany nearly six months. So what was your reaction when you heard the news? I was in Charleston when I got the email, and I was walking with my roommates, and I was like, oh, crap, it's, like, official now. Like, So I think Zach's shot here at this angle really is much better than the side-on shot from his um, previous recording or his pre previous story. In this shot, I would pan left just a little bit so that we can get less of the wall on the right-hand side and a little more to the left. You can tell he has curated the location. He's got a couple of things in the background. They're a little bit of a distraction, but um, these are ways that even if you're just sitting there and listening, to your Zoom interview, you can record that after the Zoom interview is over. You can have the Zoom interview playing in your computer and just record 15 seconds of you listening to the person talking. You can do that at any time. We call those pickup shots and you can get really creative with that. So uh, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen right now on that and come on back to you and just, uh, just remind you that I have a handout that kind of summarizes all of these things. You've seen a few examples of it. Uh, what I want you to do for the first assignment is just give me your best Zoom background, your best Zoom look with your most professional look that you can um, for the purposes of me kind of helping you to identify things that you might be able to do differently. Um, if you were needing to use this location for the Look Live assignment that's coming up, and that's a, a heavily graded assignment, so I'd like to be able to give you a little bit of feedback for what that is. So that's a homework assignment, and it is due on um, uh, the 28th of September, so that'll give me enough time to give you a little guidance on that. So um, thanks for your time today. Uh, hopefully you can use the rest of the class time wisely and uh, work on some of your other projects. Okay, thanks. I'll see you guys soon.